to my house. <laughs> San Francisco 49ers, we did make those playoffs. We were plus 62 in net points. Well, our brain trust is GM John Lynch, head coach Kyle Shanahan. Now, here again, we have one of those split responsibility coordinator situations where Bobby Slowick mm -hmm. is the offensive passing game coordinator and Chris Forster mm -hmm. is the O-line and run game coordinator. You know, okay, I'm going to leave that alone. Special teams. I, I'm going to say, coordinator. huh? I just kind of remembered reading something, and I, I hope I say this properly. Rumor has it that Shanahan, for sure, and possibly some of these other head coaches and GMs that have this uh, co-coordinator thing going on, do it on purpose to leave the actual title of offensive or defensive coordinator open for somebody who proves to them that they're too valuable to lose. In other words, let's say Bobby Slowick and Chris Forrester work really well together, okay? But Chris Forrester really proves himself in a way where he really improves the defensive line and improves the run game and the, the, and the team's whole uh, run game situation elevates itself, okay? He may become a hot commodity to other teams after the season's over. They may not want to lose him. They could, in fact, elevate him to the offensive coordinator title and leave Bobby Slowick as an assistant offensive coordinator. In other words, the title carries a little bit more money and a whole heck of a lot more prestige with it. You see what I'm saying? So this is a negotiating tactic yes, to, be yes. able to, to yes. say, okay, uh, rather than let you go, we'll, we'll, we'll make you yes. this offensive coordinator. So they leave yes. it open. And that means a lot to these guys. That means a lot to these coaches. Well, we've seen two teams in, in so far in this half of the show that have that type of a situation. Right. Well, I'll keep an eye out on that. Um, and I believe the Niners have done it before. I can't remember remember off the top of my head which coaches they lost lately that went to the teams, but they kept them an extra year. Well, that might have been, for example, um, uh, what's uh, what's the coach who went to Miami? Our offensive coordinator. He's now their head coach. Yeah, right, 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 right. I think they made him offensive coordinator last season. Now, of course, he, he loved being made offensive coordinator, but he's not going to turn down being a head coach. You no, know, what I mean? absolutely. But, not. but they might have got another year out of him by doing that. Well, the guys who apparently uh, ascended to their coordinator jobs are D'Amico Ryan's for defense and Brian Snyder for special teams. We have Jimmy Garoppolo listed as the quarterback in the Brain Trust, and. He, as long as he's there, yes, you know, that's that's going to be like that. Um, and uh, Trey Lance is sitting in the in the background. And again, as a fan, I still don't have a problem with Trey Lance sitting another year and, and, or at the very least sitting behind Garoppolo, because if you want to bet that he's going to get hurt, then let him sit there. <laughs> and you know that at some particular point, yes, young Trey Lance is going to get his opportunity. Right. You don't need to push it. Right. It's not like he's going to be nailed to the bench. You know what I'm saying? Never to see the field again. The chances of Jimmy going down have proven to be uh, pretty good. <laughs> so, but, hey. but I will say this. Uh, to me, keeping Jimmy doesn't hurt you at all. Uh, some people might think it's kind of stagnating young kid, but I, I don't know. Somebody made an observation on TV the other day. I think it was one of my favorite guys to watch, Nick Wright. He said, you know how these teams have been showing young quarterbacks in OTAs making these throws and, and practice and doing this or that? He said, how come we never see any Trey Lance video? Is he that unimpressive, perhaps? 
<laughs> Something to think about. Well, Fortina is not going to even let you have a clue as to who the potential offensive coordinator is. Obviously, we are about subterfuge. Oh, okay. They're keeping them under wraps, huh? Keeping them under wraps, you know? Okay. Right? All right. That's cool. That's cool. Well, let's see who's making those decisions. That would be their brain trust. Starting with GM, John Lynch. John Lynch. Unlike most NFL GMs, John Lynch started his executive and administrative career right here as the 49ers GM. Not like anybody else, okay? He uh, became the GM of the 49ers 10 years after retiring from a 14-year playing career. He has absolutely no front office experience except for what he's gotten since being the GM of the 49ers. And he's held the position for the last five seasons and done pretty well with it as far as I'm concerned, considering he was never a scout. He was never a you know, player personnel guy. Never did any of that. Came right in, jumped right in, and took over the reins and did fairly well. Well, I, I believe I believe he was a, a big fantasy football guy then. <laughs> well, <laughs> if he was, then I guarantee you that helped him. <laughs> okay, because I could probably do a GM job in the NFL. Uh oh, <laughs> uh, so oh, I'm not supposed to be tooting my own horn in this. Oh no, go ahead, toot oh, your horn. Okay. You 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 you're the guy who I remember was just talking about. You were so in awe at these guys coaching in the NFL. They had to really know what they were doing, and yeah. we used to argue about that because I used to go, oh, "They barely had to know somebody." That's what they had to know. <laughs> <laughs> now, well, as you can see by these extensive resumes I'm going over with these guys, a lot of them really had to work hard to work their way up to where they are now. So they had to show some kind of smarts. Well, a lot of these names are names that we, you know, we we, we know we know D'Amico Ryan's, for example, you know. Yeah, yeah. We know that name. He's got a football history, so I, I like and our brain know, trust. I'm, I'm I don't have a real problem with I, it. I have um, no problem with your brain brain trust. In fact, and fundamentally, Kyle Shanahan is calling the plays. Yes. Uh, again, bloodlines, Super Bowl winning head coach Mike Shanahan. What is his dad? Uh, he spent 2004 through 2007 as an offensive assistant and position coach with the Buccaneers and the Texans. And he was the offensive coordinator for the Texans for the 2008-2009 season. He was offensive coordinator of Washington from 2010 to 2013. And he was offensive coordinator of the Browns uh, for 2014. Yeah, right. One year with the Browns. Yep. Washington, 2010 to 2013, he was OC. One season with the Browns in 2014. Then became the offensive coordinator of the, of the Falcons from 2015 to 2016. Unfortunately, was part of that Super Bowl collapse, but coached the team very well through the season. He's been the 49ers head coach since 2017. Excellent head coach. I really like Shanahan. Uh, again, we have a two-way thing going on here with the offensive coordinator, which we talked about. And, of course, it makes it a little bit simpler when we know that Kyle Shanahan does most of the offensive work on the sidelines during games. So these other two guys give him their offensive passing game plan and their offensive line and run game plan. He puts that together to make his game plan each week. Um, let me see. Da, 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 da. Oh, a little bit about them. So uh, oh, I already did that. Oh, DC, D'Amico Ryans. Yes, we know D'Amico Ryans. He enjoyed a 10 year playing career as a linebacker for the Texans and for the Eagles. How many people out there remember D'Amico Ryans played for the Eagles? He served as a defensive assistant and linebacker coach for the 49ers from 2018 to 2020. And he became the D.C. last season for the 49ers. So that's when we lost the uh, the coach who went to the Jets. Yes. Robert Sala. 
Solid, right. A former defensive coordinator. Yes, D'Amico was his linebacker coach and has now taken over. That's it. That's, it. that's how you run an organization, man. You yes, sir. To- You're right. I agree. I agree. Right Keep them. House. They already know everybody. In-house. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. All righty. All righty. So uh, is that the brain trust? Ready to move on to the roster reset? Sure thing. Roster reset for the San Francisco 49ers. Additional addition signings, losses, losses, and draft picks. Oh, let's see. Additions. Javaris Ward is a pretty decent corner. Mostly plays slot corner. Got him from the Chiefs. I'm going to consider him a pretty good addition. Ray Ray McLeod is a wide receiver from the Steelers. He was probably their lowest rated wide receiver. Not a big deal there. Uh, George Odom is a decent safety. Uh, I'll consider him a decent addition. Nothing really big to shout about here. Uh, although I do like Ward at slot corner. He's a pretty speedy guy, covers pretty well. Big losses. Uh, I don't know. I'll ask you as a fan, what do you think about losing DJ Jones? I, I like DJ Jones. DJ, like DJ Jones, Jones fill up some a space on that line. Good run stopper, DC. Yeah, yeah, especially. Okay. Um, okay. Lakin Thomason is an okay offensive guard. Uh, you know, right. works well with him too much. Team. And but Raheem know, Mostert. You know you how know, much I love Raheem Mostert. You know I love Raheem Mostert, man. Oh, my God. You I love him from, from a fantasy perspective? I love him from a fantasy perspective when he's on the field. Unfortunately, for most of he gets hurt a lot. But when he's healthy, I try my best to keep him on my team. He is yeah. now gone to I mean, it, it, it takes the this is when I'm playing Madden not to put him in because he's sitting right there in my roster. Right. I'm like, nah, I'm not gonna get used to him again because once you get used to that, it's it's hard to change your your yeah, whole muscle is. twitch changes from one running back to the other. And I'm used to Mitchell now. <laughs> so I'm sticking with Mitchell and uh I I, I Cannon. I like Cannon too because he's fast. He's he's got right. good speed. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, what we wind up with. And especially, you know, if Dean- well, you still got Elijah and you still got Wilson. I, I think if both of them come back healthy, that kind of puts Cannon as a kick returner. Yeah. And that's what he does. That's what I use him for in most cases. So, yeah. 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 Uh, your draft wasn't anything to really shout about, bro. I don't know a whole heck of a lot about all these guys. Uh Terion Davis Price running back out of LSU. I'm going to say we'll keep an eye on him just because he's out of LSU. And I think the wide receiver from SMU, Danny Gray, could end up making some noise. Uh, SMU had a nice passing game. Danny Gray might make a little noise there. Uh, We'll see. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm hoping our round four offensive tackle can help. Uh, You know, I always am looking to – Short oh, our line. We have a few strong linemen and a few weak linemen. So anything we offensive can- line, no matter how late you take them, usually they're always worth keeping your fingers crossed that they'll pop up and be really good. That's the one position that kind of ends up guys end up proving themselves over and above their worth on draft day. You know what I mean? All right. I'm looking forward to that. All right. 